Yes, that's a good question. And it has to do with a question which has, in fact, not really to do with knowledge. It has to do with psychology. In fact, if we come back to the very beginning of the Islamic history, the Islamic civilization, the Muslims took from the Chinese, they took from the Greek, they took from all the civilization because they were in a position of confidence. They were confident with their principles, so they, don't, they are not scared to take and to transform and to be selected. It's only when you are not confident with your own that you are scared to take and you are creating the inferiority complex. In fact, it's a psychological state which is, I'm not so sure with my stance and my principle, so I am scared to take from others. And I would suggest that the best answer to this is to tell the Muslims, you better now know more about your own tradition and your own religion and be confident about it. Be confident with what you have. And then be selective with what comes from others. I was born and raised in Switzerland, in a non-Muslim majority country. And I looked at so many things, you know, and, and, and what I got from my education is a sense of confidence. I know who I am. I know my principles. Everything that I saw which was good, I took. And things that I understood were bad, I rejected them. You know, you have to be quite confident. I'm, I'm key, taking this example when you speak with somebody and you are confident with your own thoughts, and you know who you are and what you want. When you speak with him or her, and you tell him, you know what, everything good you are saying is mine. Everything bad you are saying is yours. You understand how you should be confident in the way you think, and say, okay, that's good, that's mine. Welcome. It's bad, keep it. I'm not going to share it. You have to do this with all the sciences. And, and this is where I wouldn't uh, suggest to Muslims to dismiss the tradition. It's a rich tradition with lots of things, contributions, thoughts, commentaries. Uh, all this has to be studied in a way in order to be equipped to deal with the world the way it is now. And to reconcile ourselves with something which is important we have to be an added value in the world today. We have to contribute. When the people in the West are always, and they keep on saying, we have to uh, integrate, I say, no, my, my business is not to integrate. My business is to contribute, to give something, to provide the people with something. And this is where the psychology should be. You know, that, that's the point. Your question is essential. We, we really need psychologically to, to know that we have a role to play. We have a mission. A mission with science, a mission with society, a mission with politics, a mission with economy, with arts. Where are the Muslims when it comes to imagination and culture? What are we providing to the world today? Why? Where, where is this? In Europe, for example, if you want to show what the Muslims did, we go to Spain. Okay, that's fine. Are we going to go till the end of the, uh, uh, the time to... to yes, exactly. We go there and we are idealizing because we feel unequipped for today. So we have to change this. We have to be more creative. And by the way, this is also something which is very important, is that the Prophet ﷺ took from other culture. He was listening to the companions when they were coming with strategies and things that were done by Persian, done by Arabs, done by other civilizations. She, he took and took and took. And this is a sense of confident creativity. Confident creativity. Okay, these will be the last three questions. So the three people up there are going to be the ones to go. So brother first, then the sister, then the brother. Brother, you were there first, so you can just go first. We're going first, come first, sir. That's nice. Well done. <laughs> That's out of politeness. We'll take the time and decide who is going to speak first. Uh, first of all, uh, first of all, uh, I'd like to thank you for the insightful speech. Um, it's always nice to have a different perspective on things that. Um, uh, it's it's always insightful to have someone who might have a different perspective, uh, 
even when it comes to the same things, maybe shed some new light on the same old information. But um, you mentioned that uh, we should change the way that we think when it comes in regard to space and time and things of that nature. So my question was, what are some of the first steps that we Muslims can take in order to achieve that? Thank you. So that's a good question. Um, yes, I, I, I really think that in our life today, we need to change the way we deal with times and space. You know, you have one experience of that. I'm sure you have noticed that when you fast, your relationship with space and time is different. You wake up in the morning and, and you eat and then you don't eat the whole day. There is something which is changing. Your psychological state is different during Ramadan. You look at things differently, the, 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 the relationship with time. And I would say that what is very important in our daily life is the way we structure our time. Many people, for example, are asking me, how come you are traveling all this and you are able to write? Because it's a question of being disciplined. It's a discipline. The, when you wake up in the morning, the way you deal with time, it's very important. You should not be only uh, strict with time because you are going to work. Many are on time at work, are always late to pray. So the relationship with your time is very important. And also something which is important is the relationship with nature, is, is the way you look at the world around you, which is important. And it also has to do with the way we respect nature. I would say that it starts with these small details, as uh, the way we are looking at nature, the way we are respecting nature, the way we are respecting animals, for example, we are not good in the way we deal with animals today. We are not good in the way we deal with nature. So this is something which is important. And then also uh, in the way, maybe you are too young to be a father, but also when educating our kids, this relationship with time, with the space, with the environment, it's very important. It's part of our spiritual life. And I would say more discipline and more interaction with the nature with nature around you, makes it something that could help you to, to keep this meaning. This is, very, this is spiritual life as well. This is deep and important. 